What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here. My name's Luke, and I'm just getting rid of the saw bar that I just got from, oh my gosh, what the hell, over here at the end of the Digistruct Peak run. I have just run through Digistruct Peak with all snipers, and I was going to go ahead and show you my gear and skill build, and then we're going to go ahead and get started on this run. Now I had uploaded a run through Digistruct Peak with all snipers just a couple days ago, and I had promised a full commentary version of that run if people were interested. It sounded like people did want to go ahead and have a commentary for this particular uh, challenge, you know, completing Digistruct Peak with all snipers. And I definitely wanted to bring that to you guys, but I wanted to get a little bit better run before I did that. So I just went ahead and recorded another run. And even though I was pretty busy while I was kind of recording this run, or when I say busy, I get interrupted a couple times by phone calls. But it went pretty well, and I decided to go ahead and upload it, and then give you insight as to what I'm doing throughout this run. So obviously I got the good spawn in the first area where we got all of those spider bots. Those are pretty easy to take out. And then these guys here usually aren't too bad to take out either. This spawn's not as great for Sniper Zero as it is for Melee Zero, but it still works out pretty easy. If you can get through these Slag Centurion Ants, you'll be able to get through pretty easily. Sometimes a, uh, a rabid skag can spawn and that can make it a little bit tougher. Obviously if you group two similar looking enemies together, uh, it's very very easy to bore them. And so sometimes that works out on both the Black Queen and Scorch as well. But with similar types of spider ants, if they get close enough to each other, they are usually bore bait. And you can work through them pretty easily like that. Obviously these guys you want to get the critical hits, but sometimes they're difficult to get the critical hits on. Now here is a rabid skag. These guys can sometimes be a little bit tough for all sniper zero. Uh, you have to get a well-timed shot with the Pimpernel in order to deal damage to them in an effective manner uh, or have a lot of critical ascension stacks. And even then sometimes you can miss that critical because he only has his mouth open for a very little while. Luckily though, with uh, most areas where the rabid skag spawn, it's pretty easy to convince the rabid skag to chase a decoy to the edge and then go ahead and melee him off the edge and that works out for a pretty easy kill that you might have otherwise had to waste a lot of ammo on. You know it's pretty easy to survive them but you can end up wasting a lot of bullets from a rather limited ammo pool that way. Obviously I am wearing a stockpile relic to increase my maximum ammo capacity. By using only snipers I should kind of convince the game to give me more sniper ammo because that will be the only ammo stock other than grenades that I will be depleting. And so when I'm below about 30% sniper ammo, chest and enemies will have weighted sniper rifle ammo drops. And that works out pretty well pre for preserving your ammo throughout the run. So we're going to go ahead and finish off this little area now. We still have one more guy that I'm not realizing is behind me. And then we'll have to kill one more spider tank and a few spider ants, or a couple spider ants rather, over there. There are some other spawns in this area. The worst one is probably where you get uh, two enemies on the bridge and one of them happens to be a super badass repair surveyor. That can usually work out to be pretty poor. Um, you know, if you get a bad spawn in the first area, it's just the first area and it's not that bad if you wipe. However, sometimes uh, bad spawns later in the run can work out a little bit more irritatingly, but it's not that bad. All of the spawns can be worked through, obviously some are just a lot of bit harder than others. I just said a lot of it, I didn't mean to. They are a lot harder than others. Gonna go ahead and finish off these Emperor Spider Ants now. These guys aren't too hard to get critical hits on, but again, uh, sometimes with the Spider Ants they just don't give you very good behavior and can get locked in sort of like a roll cycle or a jump cycle and be kind of difficult to actually score critical hits on. With the spider ants, even though I am not specced into melee when they are, uh, I mean other than killing blow, when they are in killing blow range, if you get a good execute on their butt or their critical area, you'll be able to kill them very easily. And I've even had that work on the black queen when I've been out of ammo and scorch once as well. So something to think about there, don't un underestimate the power of Killing Blow just because you're not specced into melee or are not wearing a roid shield. I'm going to take this opportunity here to gather a little bit of ammo to make sure that I will have enough ammo to get through the next area. Especially if we get the bad spawn in the next area, which we are going to, you're going to need a lot of ammo to get through these guys. I say this is the bad, the bad spawn because it is the one that spawns four surveyors with Scorch. And that's probably the worst spawn you can get in the peak, to be honest with you. 
Um, I guess some of the assassin spawns are pretty vicious as well, but I mean, four surveyors with double scorch and these turrets right away are kind of aggravating to me. Um, definitely not my favorite spawn. Uh, I'm sure there's someone out here who likes this spawn for some particular reason, but I think this is one of the worst spawns in the peak. First, you gotta get rid of these turrets, deal with a couple nonsense guys over here, and then you can move on. But once you finally do kill all, all of these guys, there will be some surveyors that spawn up on the top ridge. And once you take those out, Scorch will spawn with four repair surveyors. And that's usually just a pain in the ass. But that's what happens here. And we get through it, you know, without too much difficulty. Luckily, there is quite a bit of ammo in this area. Before you come to this area, there's obviously those five chests on the other side of or I guess ammo crates they're called, not ammo chest. So there's five ammo crates on the other side of the big wall. Right before you get to that big wall divider though, there are also four ammo chests along the wall to the right. And then once you get in, right around the door to the right, past the jack uh, little placard, the little cardboard cutout, um, there are two more ammo chests, and then there are four more ammo chests along the left wall coming down from that first area. And then there are obviously four more chests down here at this little area as well. And so if you make use of all of those properly, you shouldn't run out of ammo even if you get the bad spawn, with proper shot placement at least. So like I said, this is kind of a surveyor heavy spawn and we have multiple surveyors spawning at this point. Luckily some of them ended up being shield surveyors, which makes them a lot easier to take out. Unfortunately though, there are repair surveyors about and we can't just kind of count on them just applying a shield to an enemy, we have to weaken the enemy first in order to coerce them to kind of behave and sit still. Now we only have two more surveyors left and nothing for them to repair or apply a shield to, so we're going to have to figure out a way to kill these guys. Usually to kill these surveyors, I just jump their shock attacks, slag them with the Pimpernel, and either lower their shield with the slag Pimpernel or use the shock Lyuta if I'm trying to do it quickly or just feel like I have enough ammo in this particular situation. So what I want to do here is take out this last one and then be at a point where I have at least enough ammo to take out one or two surveyors because I know that the four surveyors are coming. Uh, I should note that another common spawn is where no enemies spawn in the first half of this area and then a little constructor spawns up by the gate. I recommend using a Lyuta or other Vladov sniper rifle to go ahead and stack critical ascension off that guy. You can get up to about 40 stacks or 45 stacks even if you use a shock Lyuta. And that works out pretty well because then you can use those stacks on into Scorch and the other enemies that spawn after or spawn before Scorch rather, like rabbit skags and uh, you know, there's a variety of things that can spawn, such as the slag centurion ants. Anyway, you can take those out pretty easily if you use the stacks you've accumulated from the surveyor that spawns up by the gate, and that works out really, really well usually. Obviously, I didn't get that spawn though, and I'm going to have to struggle through these surveyors. So what I'm doing is just distracting Scorch and then trying to kill these surveyors one by one. Obviously, it's kind of difficult, and I'd recommend trying to keep at least two of them in a group. Um, obviously, I didn't do that there. I went ahead and killed one from each group, so now we have two independent surveyors as opposed to two that would kind of be potted together. However, they are kind of lining up at this point, and we've got them kind of grouped up, which makes it a lot easier. Use my Lyuta to deal a little bit of damage and kill this one. Unfortunately, Scorch is trying to troll me, but I was able to use Boar in order to go ahead and shoot behind him there and take out the surveyor. Only one more surveyor left now, and once we kill him, we can start focusing on Scorch. Scorch is definitely not as tough for Sniper Zero as he is for Melee Zero. He's really not that tough for Melee Zero with patience. However, uh, the damage over time from Scorch, which can sometimes be a little bit unpredictable because he can change his actions very quickly, uh, can be definitely a killer for Melee Zero. But as Sniper Zero, you don't have to worry about that quite as much because you're not spending as much time in melee range. What I like to try to do sometimes is to get them grouped together and then use the Lyuta to really kill one very quickly and it usually does a lot of damage to the other one as well. Plus it builds a number of critical ascension stacks that you can then use to kill the second one. Obviously critical ascension is absolutely necessary for sniping the peak, or at least, you know, the way I play it it is. 
because it definitely makes a huge difference and very quickly. Plus, as you will see later, it helps us get through the hard part of the map very, very easily. I'm going to go ahead and finish off this Scorch now using a combination of Deathmark, Deception, and the Lyuta. He's got just a bee's dick of health left. We'll go ahead and finish him off and now charge up the hill in order to get to Dukino's mom. Unfortunately, we killed Scorch well, f way far away from the uh, transition door here, so it will take just a little while to run over there. Um, unfortunately, you can't jump up this cliff, so you have to run all the way around, which is pretty irritating, but it's safer to fight those surveyors over there, I've noticed, than it is over here, because they can fly over this wall over here and recover their health when you can't actually see them or damage them, and that can make the surveyors a lot more difficult to take out. Plus, the other side is more open and gives you more cover from Scorch because of that as well. Now, obviously, we're coming to Dukino's mom now. I consider Dukino's mom to be probably the third hardest part if you get the wrong spawn for a Sniper Zero. The right spawn is the one where Dukino's mom spawns right away with some midgets that are about so that you'll actually have a second wind opportunity. When you get the little skags that spawn before Dukino's mom, You'll take all those out and then fight Dukino's mom one on one, and that can be a pretty tough fight because there isn't really much to recover health on. And if she chooses to do the shock attack, uh, where she spits those shock orbs multiple times, you can definitely find yourself dead and without an opportunity for a second wind. Obviously, Dukino's mom's critical spot is right in her mouth there, and unlike most skags, she doesn't have to have her mouth open in order for you to hit that critical spot. And so you can just pretty much lay into her there and take out massive amounts of her health while building critical ascension stacks. Obviously, whenever she does that shock attack, you're going to want to throw deception and get out of there so that you won't die. You'll also need to recover your health with transfusion grenades. When fighting her one-on-one -on -one or solo with none of the second wind opportunities about, you're going to want to keep a pretty constant flow of transfusion grenades going because if she does that shock attack while you don't have a deception ready she'll most likely kill you otherwise and that's something you definitely want to avoid because like I said there is no second wind opportunity we're just gonna kill her now though with our massive amount of critical ascension we got up to 50 stacks off of her with a little bit of help from maintaining the stacks and gaining a couple stacks off the little midget guys which I definitely recommend when you've broken line of sight with Dukino's mom for one of several reasons. These little guys can help you not only gain criticals, but more importantly preserve your criticals while you can't score any criticals off of Dukino's mom. Plus, they'll give you just a little bit of stack hold time before you run into the next area. I think the best spawn in this area is when both Black Queens spawn right away, and you can use your critical ascension that you've accumulated on Dukino's mom to go ahead and take out the Black Queens very easily. Plus, the Black Queens are very easy to get criticals off of, so your stacks won't even deplete that much, which is good. Unfortunately, we got the spawn that's kind of heavy on surveyors. Obviously, surveyors have no critical hit spots, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to maintain our stacks. Luckily, the surveyors stood really still for us, or I guess flew really still for us, hovered very still, so we were actually able to bore a couple of them and take them out very easily. Usually you don't want to aim straight for the head with the Pimpernel, but when a guy's hiding behind a ledge like that and you're just trying to maintain your critical ascension stacks, sometimes it's a good idea. So we're going to go ahead and finish off the rest of these guys here. Once you get rid of all of these guys and the surveyors, obviously the two black queens will spawn. And it's actually a pretty safe fight against the two black queens when there are no other uh, pyro ants that disappear or slag centurion ants about. Which can happen, but again, if you have enough critical ascension stacks, you can work through spider ants very easily because they are very easy to critical hit with the Pimpernel. Obviously, I had to pause here. This was something that I might have brought up a little bit earlier in the video. I got a pretty lengthy phone call there. I was on the phone for about 45 minutes, and then I jumped right back into this, kind of in a precarious situation. Threw me off a little bit, but it wasn't that bad. I still had a couple of stacks of critical ascension, and only one badass enemy to kill, and then this surveyor. And then we'll be moving on to the Black Queen, and we'll get to what I think is the most critical part of the run, the Bonehead section. And I'll explain that once we actually get there. Um, like I said, I was a little rusty coming off that phone call, so it takes me a little bit to kill this surveyor. Apologize for that, guys. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and finish off the two Black Queens. 
Uh, it was pretty cool how Shadowplay just kept recording even though I had left it for like 45 minutes. I know that pretty much any program would do that. But it was, you know, pretty neat to see that it just created uh, a file that wasn't too large just because I had left all that pause time. The compression algorithm is pretty well done because it realized there was no video or audio cues going on. Everything was pretty still, so it didn't have to make very large file size for that 45 minutes. And I found that interesting. Anywho. We're going to go ahead and take out the Black Queens now. Um, you can get some critical hits off the Black Queens, but you can also grab a lot of critical hits off the little uh, ghosty spider ants that they spawn as well. Keep the Black Queen spawned, obviously. She doesn't have too much health, but she has quite a bit if you're working at zero critical ascension stacks. Obviously, like I said, you can get lucky and get that good spawn where she spawns right away, and you can pretty much blow her up with the uh, critical hits you've accumulated off Dukino's mom. Now the black ant spider webs do slow you down and so that can actually end up killing you sometimes because you think you'll be able to avoid the next set of webbing but you're too slow to actually avoid it and it ends up killing you when you didn't think maybe you were going to go down there and that can be kind of irritating and it's definitely something to watch out for. Like I said, the spider ants are very vulnerable to bore though if you get a lot of them grouped up. In this area there are a few ammo chests that are available to you. There are two that are right over here, and then there are two more that are over on the other side of this area as well. Only open these if you're low on ammo, that way you'll be sure that they'll have at least a little bit of the ammo you need in them. Because if you open it when you're full on sniper ammo, it might not spawn with as much sniper ammo as you'll later need in the area. And that could definitely be a bummer. It sucks to lose just because you ran out of ammo. But such is the nature of doing a strictly sniper run, I guess. Luckily, uh, it doesn't happen to me very often because I have a way of getting around that basically by making good use of the ammo chests that are about. Or, I guess, yeah, crates, ammo crates or chest, whatever you want to call them. We're going to go ahead and finish off the rest of these guys now. It's taking me just a little bit because I have to eliminate at least one black queen before I can feel safe enough to actually go toe to toe with these spider ants because two black queens launching is actually a fairly offensive force and you have to watch out for that. Um, sometimes I decide to lead the Black Queens through the door back to Dukino's mom because they get really close to each other sometimes then and it actually makes for a great opportunity to explode them which is definitely a very easy way to take them out. However, sometimes that happens and you'll actually be in a situation where you can't uh, get them to line up properly and it just ends up being a waste of time. So. Maybe you want to do that, maybe you don't. I used Killing Blow there to take out the Black Queen because I was out of ammo. Now I'll go ahead and fill up on ammo a little bit. Got up to 60 ammo now, and that's pretty good. We'll go ahead and try to finish off the rest of these Black Queens with Slag Transfusion Grenades helping me recover my health again. Once you've taken out the Black Queens, the little ones really aren't that bad. Their uh, long volley webbing is not quite as damaging or has the stun effect that the Black Queen's webbing has. So you can just go ahead and pretty much walk up to these guys, aim for Pimpernel uh, sweet spots and just lay into them. Obviously I'm using zero velocity with the Pimpernel at the moment because there are so many spider ants in Digistruct Peak. Sometimes when I'm playing Sniper Zero I actually like to have a few points in velocity at least for my mobbing. However, in Digistruct Peak that's not really an option because you have to deal with surveyors and small to the ground spider ants so very often. And that's why I definitely recommend zero velocity if you're going to be primarily relying on the Pimpernel in the peak area. So now we've finished off the little spider ants and we'll be moving on to the bonehead area. The bonehead area precedes the two areas that are actually the hardest for Sniper Zero to overcome. So I actually recommend leaving one bonehead alive you know, as you kill the rest of the enemies in the area, and then stacking a lot of critical ascension off of Bonehead. This actually makes the run pretty easy to pull off, believe it or not. If you follow this step, it makes the next two sessions very, very easy, and you'll be able to get through Digistruct Peak without a, an overly difficult area. Now, Bonehead did take me out here. You do have to watch out for his elemental grenades. Definitely something to watch out for because his elemental grenades can be quite powerful. And he often throws multiple in a volley, so watch out for that because those can apply a damage over time that will not only kill you uh, 
you're, it won't just do a lot of damage to you at first, but then it will apply that damage over time to you, which will end up killing you. And that's something you want to watch out for. When you get the spawn that has three boneheads right away, obviously make sure you leave one of them because that's the only bonehead you'll have. Or the only three boneheads you'll have. Once you kill at least one of the boneheads, uh, other things start spawning, such as those turrets, which you definitely have to watch out for. A few surveyors, a few loaders, and maybe a few marauders or nomads. It's a little bit different every time, I believe. Right now we have a repair surveyor working on these Hyperion turrets, which is kind of aggravating because those have a lot of firepower, and they're kind of difficult to actually get a good shot on sometimes, unless you're making heavy use of cover. And Bonehead snuck up behind me there while I was trying to kill a turret that the surveyor was repairing, and so I was basically just wasting ammo there. And that didn't work out very well for me. Now here I make a little bit of a mistake. I try to shoot Bonehead's arm off here before the repair surveyor is actually uh, defeated. And so the repair surveyor comes back and heals Bonehead, which actually grants him access to his gun again, even though his arm is gone. And that ends up being kind of cruddy for me, but luckily Bonehead had a really, really crappy gun. If he had a better gun, such as like a high fire rate tour gun or something, that might have turned out to bite me a little bit more than it did. It ended up not being that bad. So we're going to go ahead and take out these turrets now. See, the surveyor is now healing Bonehead. This is what I wanted to avoid, but that's what happened, unfortunately. So now we're going to have to take out that surveyor and just deal with the fact that Bonehead has access to an invisible gun. As you can see, he's shooting at me there with no right arm. And that's kind of irritating uh, because I can't really shoot his arm off later in order to pre-stack off of him. But it ends up not being that big of a deal. Unfortunately, this surveyor is trolling pretty hard right now. But I had to run away from it because I had no health left and... Very few transfusion grenades left. I didn't want to waste my last one. So I'll go ahead and take out this last turret, and then I will take out the surveyor in an area where Bonehead is not, and the surveyor actually took a seat for me, so that worked out pretty well. Now I'm going to go ahead and acquire ammo, especially from the left half of the map at first, and then I will go ahead and start stacking on Bonehead. As you can see, Bonehead just happens to have some gun that has a really low fire rate right now, only fires one bullet and not very accurately. He's shooting at me and he's not even connecting, you know, even though he has a pretty straight on line of view here. So what I'm doing is just acquiring ammo so that I will have enough ammo to go ahead and stack critical ascension. I'm going to have to shoot his grenade arm off eventually because I don't want to have to deal with those grenades while I'm stacking critical ascension. It's not absolutely necessary to stack critical ascension at this point. I have made it through the Doc Mercy and Assassin areas without pre-stacking Critical Ascension in the Bonehead area. However, it makes it a lot easier to go ahead and stack Critical Ascension here. And the time you'll make up in those sections actually makes up for the time lost in this section, I'd say. Especially, you know, as far as a matter of safety is concerned. You'll breeze through the next two sections if you take this step. I had to pause here again, another phone call. I apologize, guys, I was getting a lot of phone calls at this particular time. I'm going to go ahead and lure Bonehead into a spot where I feel comfortable stacking Critical Ascension off of him. That place is going to be somewhere where either his grenades are going to hit a wall when he throws them at me, and he can't actually hit me with his I-beam either, because that can apply a shock damage over time, and that's something you want to avoid, because that can end up downing you in a situation where you're not even really trying to fight Bonehead, just make use of him. So as you can see, he's shooting me with that invisible gun there and throwing those grenades. So what I'm going to do is stack Critical Ascension once I get this Corrosive D.O.T. off of me. It would have been a real shame if the Corrosive D.O.T. finished up my blockade and then killed me here. I guess it's a time that I could go ahead and tell you guys that I use an all TDR parts blockade. I know that the Hyperion, all Hyperion parts gives a pretty desirable combination of shield recharge delay capacity and recharge rate however the TDR all TDR version of it just gives a very good recharge delay and that's actually what I look for in my sniper shield for zero um, it may not be exactly what you look for so definitely pick a blockade that fits your play style what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and start stacking the critical ascension once I've confirmed 
that his uh, I-beam will hit that wall there instead of me. In a weird situation right now, because I don't want to start pre-stacking until I know that I'm going to be able to very easily acquire these critical hits as to not waste my very limited ammo. So I'm going to go ahead and start acquiring those critical hits now. I'm just going to go until all the ammo in this area is depleted basically, because once you cross into the next area, there are three chests that you can acquire ammo from, and that's usually enough to go ahead and at least finish off the Doc Mercy area, if not more, once you have a large amount of critical ascension. So I recommend you guys stack critical ascension on Bonehead here, like I said it makes it a lot easier for the rest of the run. Don't really have too much to say except shoot off his grenade arm, I don't know why I hadn't done that earlier. Once you shoot off his grenade arm, it's definitely a lot easier to stack critical ascension off of him. Uh, if you don't make the mistake I did and shoot off his shooting arm while he still has uh, a surveyor that can repair it about, you'll definitely be in the clear. If he can't shoot at you or throw grenades at you, uh, he can only do that I-beam and it's pretty easy to get in a situation where the I-beam can't hit you due to an obstacle being between you and Bonehead. Now you can use all of the chests that are available in this area to go ahead and stack critical ascension. You do have to do it rather quickly though because the critical ascension stacks do have a lifetime timer and you definitely need to get through the assassin area before your stacks start depleting. So that's what I'm trying to do now is just stack critical ascension pretty quickly. Um, there's obviously that one chest that is right near the gate where on the other side of it is those turrets usually and then there are two more by this little hut two more along the left side wall one more over here to the right on some stairs and then two more by the onions and that's quite a few ammo crates uh, you can definitely acquire quite a bit of ammo from that and in turn get a lot of critical ascension I try not to open the ammo crates unless I'm well below the 30% ammo that I will need to go ahead and trigger the extra sniper rifle ammo to spawn. A lot of times I get all the way down to zero and then open multiple chests. But, you know, results may vary, of course, just based on the luck factor within the game. I'm up to 200 stacks now. I need to get a little bit more uh, ammo and then stack just a little bit more. And then I'll be moving on to the next area and go ahead and kill Doc Mercy and the assassins very, very quickly. Obviously, you can stack just a little bit quicker than I did, too. But, you know, I had just kind of just adopted this strategy not too long ago, and I had made the mistake of shooting off his gun hand while there was still that surveyor alive. Definitely a mistake I made, but if you learn from my mistakes, you will play even better than me. Go ahead and travel on now and acquire more ammo. You can get quite a bit of ammo, believe it or not, from these two chests here and the little jack cutouts that are around this corner as well. Obviously these got blown up while I was shooting Pimpernels over here, but there should, or at least there was, still some ammo within that pile. Obviously if you shoot those jack statues while you're low on sniper rifle ammo, you'll have an even better chance to get more ammo. When Bonehead does his jump attack, do give him just a little bit of room because it does have a rather large area of effect gonna get all the way up to north of 300 stacks here I thought this was pretty silly as I was doing it I was like there's no way I'll need 300 stacks but once I saw that 300 was obtainable I wanted to get to at least 300 and then a little bit more just because I had the ammo that allowed me to do such go ahead and kill bonehead now to gain a follow-through bonus which will help me get to the next area just a little bit quicker and give me just a little bit of time for stack hold like I said, once you go through this gate, there are three ammo chests or ammo crates right here before you jump down into the Doc Mercy area. Once you've acquired all this ammo, go ahead and jump down and then pretty much lay waste to whatever's going to spawn here. The only thing that can really throw you off is if a marauder spawns on that bridge up there uh, above the little gate that you eventually walk through and then doesn't jump down. Or if another enemy spawns up there and doesn't jump down and just waste all your critical ascension stacks. That'd really be a shame, but luckily that doesn't happen too often. As you can see, with 300 stacks of critical ascension, we'll just melt things. Uh, obviously, we have like some ridiculous amount of gun and critical damage at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and finish off these two Doc Mercies. <laughs> one was almost killed just by the slag rifle, but I'll switch to the fire one now and finish these two guys off. Once you've done that, go ahead and kill the other marauders that are about. 
try to get critical hits off these guys to save your critical hits as you run towards the assassins. Unfortunately, one jackass did go ahead and spawn up there, but I was able to get a critical hit on him pretty quickly and didn't have to wait for him to jump down. Only one more guy now, and he jumped down pretty quickly for us. Sometimes that is a problem in this area, is that these marauders just kind of stand or shoot at you from out of reach, and that can be pretty irritating. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the assassin area. I skipped those chests because I didn't really need ammo. I was hoping that wouldn't come back to bite me, but I didn't want all my stacks to disappear before I got into the assassin room because I wasted a little bit of time when I had well over 100 ammo anyways. When I say well over, I had 104, so not well over, but over enough. Gonna go ahead and finish off this rat here. Ended up getting a critical hit off him, that was good, it held my stacks a little bit. And then there was a loader that I was able to get another critical hit off of. Now I have just under 100, or I guess I have 105 now ammo, and that's definitely gonna be enough to make it through the assassins with still well over 200 stacks of critical ascension. I get an unfavorable spawn here with the turrets that happen to spawn around the area. This spawn irritates me kind of, but it's obviously not too difficult to work around because even if these turrets do down you, they're pretty easy to get a second wind off of. The main thing that irritates me about these with a sniper build is that you can't get a critical hit off them, and so until you kill them, you're just kind of wasting critical ascension stacks basically, which is aggravating, but we can get past it. So now Roof and One have spawned. I'll go ahead and kill Roof first because his shotgun and jumping is usually a little bit more dangerous than uh, One's shotgun and just kind of waddling about because his attacks are definitely a lot easier to avoid. Unfortunately, these turrets are super damn aggravating and they did go ahead and down me. However, it's, like I said, pretty easy to get a second wind off those relatively low health turrets. We're going to go ahead and kill One now, which should spawn Wreath and Watt, and then we'll be able to get past this area. Ordinarily, if you don't stack Critical Ascension, this is definitely the hardest part of the run. It's not a very favorable situation for snipers, but luckily Critical Ascension can make the area a breeze, and it's not really a problem anymore if you stack on Bonehead. Definitely something I'd recommend, because it makes this area pretty easy to cruise through. After this, we'll only have three more areas to go. We'll have the Sat well, three more areas in the boss, I should say. We have the Saturn area, what I affectionately refer to as the RPG loader area, and then the little surveyor huts slash loader huts that are right before the binary boss, and then we'll be done, basically, because the binary boss is basically boar bait, much like the bar tank. Now, obviously, my stacks are waning at this point. I don't have too many left. However, I did want to go ahead and kill a few enemies with my stacks of Critical Ascension before they were totally depleted. Especially this Slag Centurion Ant, because those can sometimes be a pain if you run out of Critical Ascension. And also the Surveyors make nice uh, little additions to go ahead and take out quickly and early while you still have a few stacks of Critical Ascension from the Bonehead stacking phase. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and start working on the rest of the enemies in this area and then still have time to buy uh, ammo before the Saturn fight. Now I do not use obviously a B shield at any point during this run. I notice a lot of zeros out there happen to use a B shield for the Saturn fight and only the Saturn fight, uh, you know, in the whole of Digistruck Peak, or sometimes just the Saturn fight and Dukino's mom. However, that's not really, you know, what I wanted to do. I wanted to do the whole thing with no B. However, if you want to use a B on Saturn, it will only accelerate things, you know, most of the time. It will make you a little bit weaker um, and a little bit more fragile, but you can't, or when I say weaker, I mean less healthy, less able to tank Saturn's, you know, attacks if he does happen to hit you. Um, but, you know, you will kill him faster if you use the B. Unless you're going for a boar explosion, sometimes the B can actually work adversely to that or counteractively and that's definitely something you want to avoid. I thought that was the last enemy there so I was gonna go ahead and stack up on ammo. Instead of using a B on Saturn I just use a corrosive pimpernel and lay into him. Uh, some of the times I kill Saturn very very quickly. I end up getting a boar explosion that takes out at least one Saturn, sometimes two, very very fast and you know then I don't have to deal with Saturn anymore. 
Unfortunately, there were a couple more enemies down here that I will have to kill before Saturn summons. You should definitely take note of your position when you kill the last enemy in this area though, because Saturn spawns right away, or starts to spawn right away I should say. His turrets spawn right away and start shooting at you right away and can easily down you. And that's definitely something you want to avoid, is being caught killing the last enemy in an area where you don't have any cover. So I decided to leave the last enemy as that surveyor so that I could get all the way up on the top of this ridge and then summon Saturn where I know I will be protected. This rock here over to my right right now is where I usually take on Saturn from. If Saturn advances on me, I retreat back to the ammo hut for the duration of the Saturn fight. I'm going to go ahead and get slag on this surveyor here and then take it out. I'm going to reattach my shock Lyuda, which I had switched with the crit machine in order to stack criticals on Bonehead. I guess I should have mentioned that. Obviously, I was using a very low leveled sniper to build critical ascension on Bonehead without killing him. You have to advance a little bit of ways in order to start Saturn's spawning process. He won't spawn if you're by the ammo vendor. And I don't recommend starting from the ammo vendor because that can encourage Saturn to jump up to this ridge quicker and then kind of negate your defenses. Something you want to avoid. This rock works pretty well as an initial fighting point because those little death or kamikaze surveyors he has will fly right into the wall the rock wall and then not damage you at all and that works out pretty well so we're gonna go ahead and work on Saturn now I try to bore through the first Saturn to the back Saturn usually and then try to hit the turrets on the back Saturn sometimes that doesn't work though like this particular run I don't do very well on Saturn at all a lot of times it goes a lot better than this sometimes this is you know what happens and when this happens it's really not that bad Saturn still isn't that offensively dangerous if you make very good use of the cover and he just happens to have a lot of health and no critical points so he takes a little bit of time but he's really not that difficult to take out obviously with melee zero I only push him to about 30 percent and then try to get a good execute that will kill him um, with sniper zero though I do not believe killing blow without a melee shield at least will have enough power to knock out Saturn and so I wouldn't recommend that when one Saturn starts, you know, trying to climb up on you a little bit, just float back up the hill a little bit and hug the rock, and you should be able to avoid his hits pretty easily. When he does get up there, though, and you're feeling a little kind of closed in or surrounded by Saturn, run back to the ammo hut, and the walls of the ammo hut will actually protect you. Plus, there is an area to buy health in case you're below health gate. I'm going to go ahead and switch to a Corrosive Relic now since I'm right by an ammo machine and I'm not really worried about ammo. The Corrosive Relic will just give me a little bit of extra damage. The Saturn I was worried about hasn't made it up the hill yet, so I'm going to focus on Lower Saturn for the time being until Upper Saturn makes himself known again and then I will kill him. You can use either side of the ammo hut to peek out on. I prefer the right side, I think it protects from the surveyors just a little bit more but the left side has served me well as well. Sometimes I alternate sides so that I don't get my bullets blocked by the surveyors. As you can see, Upper Saturn has made himself known again, and we need to kill him before he advances too far this way to where our cover becomes meaningless. I'm going to go ahead and get Deathmark on him because Deathmark will increase my damage. However, I do want to watch out that I don't get caught in his electric beam while I throw my decoy and try to grab that, uh, I guess it's called the death mark bonus. Now we're going to go ahead and finish off lower Saturn now. Like I said, if you were using a B at this point, it would just be going faster than I'm doing it. But I wanted to make it through the whole run without using a B, obviously. You know, I just don't really like the B ordinarily. Um, obviously it has its uses, but I find it more enjoyable to play mobbing situations without the B, personally at least gonna go ahead and finish off this Saturn now and then we'll be moving on to the next area which I call the RPG loader area because it's always or at least it almost always spawns several or up to a handful I guess RPG loaders which can be quite irritating because if they spawn with E-Tech launchers they have a large area of effect that can definitely be a problem 
Went ahead and reattached my stockpile relic there for extra sniper rifle ammo. And then bought more ammo so that I'll have enough ammo to go ahead and make it through the last two areas and then the binary boss. Obviously there is a, a third ammo machine on the run in the second to last area or the last area before the boss at least. So I really don't need that much ammo. Especially since there are multiple ammo chests and Saturn's ammo drops which I assumed contained some sniper rifle ammo um, on the way. However, you know, it's pretty easy just to buy ammo from that ammo machine. And so that's what I did. Luckily, this little corridor here works very well for defense against these RPG loaders in the RPG loader area. Because there is that gate there, which you can use as a good diversion. Also in this area that will spawn are turrets up on the little ridge over there. Uh, you might be able to hear my dog having a bad dream in the background. If so, I apologize. Um, anyway, <laughs> I feel bad for him now. Uh, the RPG loaders have already started spawning. Like I said, this gate works very well for protecting against their uh, rockets. And I definitely recommend hiding in this area rather than charging out into the fray there because those RPG loaders, if they spawn with E-Tech e launchers, or I guess also these bandit spread launchers, can be very, very dangerous. And definitely just take your time and take them out with the Pimpernel. So now there are going to be some turrets and everything else that spawn, and we'll have to be careful for those as well. Looks like we have another war loader over here, and then probably another RPG loader up on the stairs. Or the right side stairs, at least. Yup, and it's one with a damn E-Tech launcher, too. You definitely have to watch out for those guys. Luckily, he was partially obscured by that hill, and so he wasn't able to get too many rockets sent my way. Um, even though I was behind cover there, the blast radius on those E-Tech launchers sometimes gets me if I'm too close to the cover. Like I said, definitely watch out for those rocket loaders. They're the toughest part about this area. Especially as Sniper Zero, anyway. As Melee Zero, uh, with the multiple Mini Must Fall Deception decoys, you can kind of trick them and get around them a little bit easier than you can with Sniper Zero, where they kind of flank you pretty easily if there's more than two of them. Which is definitely the case sometimes in this area. Now that we've killed the turrets, there will be two Slag Skags that spawn and then a couple surveyors as well. Obviously we'll hope those surveyors end up being shield surveyors as opposed to repair surveyors, and it looks like they both are uh, shield surveyors, albeit one of them a badass. Because they're shield surveyors, they're a lot easier to take out than they would have been if they were repair surveyors. We went ahead and finished those guys off, and now we're going to also use the same gate that we used to protect us from the rocket loaders from the slag skags, because their slag balls travel in a parabolic arc and it hits that little gate that's up in the air a little bit and you'll be able to kill these guys pretty easily as a result of that without them even being able to do damage to you. They almost never actually run into this area so you'd make use of this area and kill these guys pretty easily and without danger. Which is a good thing because sometimes two slag dogs can pose a threat. Um, sometimes they actually group up and make for easy boar bait but that was not the case this time. Luckily though, I have plenty of ammo and no need to worry about that. I'm just going to lay into these guys, trying to get critical hits when I can. But if I can't, you know, the Pimpernel's just raw firepower and damage will eventually wear him down. Now we're going to move on to the last area, which is pretty crowded and you can get a spawn, a bad spawn, the spawn I actually get actually, um, where there's going to be quite a few surveyors about and badass surveyors among them. And it can definitely be... A real kick in the teeth for the last hard area, I guess, because the binary boss on or as zero is very, very easy. Go ahead and acquire sniper rifle ammo before we run into this area, just to make sure we're well prepared before we advance. Obviously, you don't want to die in the last area. That would be a real shame. Now, if you jump down, ah, oh, excuse me, and you get this spider tank right away, uh, that's definitely the bad spawn. You know it's the bad spawn at that point. It will either be a spider tank or a bar tank. But also with that little spider tank, there will be a badass surveyor that spawns. Ordinarily a repair surveyor too. And that can definitely ruin your day. You can go ahead and ascend up to the vending machine 
and coerce the surveyor to go ahead and kill itself on the invisible wall. However, if you do that, once you kill that surveyor, a number of enemies and more surveyors will spawn down here and actually cause you to be in a situation where you don't have much cover up on the ridge and there is maybe an ultimate or two super badass loaders or a shock nomad or something down here really you know sending up fire especially with the extra two surveyors that will spawn and that can be a bad deal looks like the spawn I got includes a blaster nomad a badass marauder and an ROUS so definitely have to watch out for those guys the turret or not the turret, the surveyor ended up killing me there, but I was able to gain a second wind off the ROUS, but barely. You know, I almost died here, which would have been a real shame. And then the repair surveyor that had killed me was just kind of sitting there, about to repair the uh, RO, ROUS I was trying to get a uh, second wind off of, and that definitely would have been a real shame. Then the shock damage over time almost killed me for a second time, where I definitely wouldn't have been able to gain a second win. Now that I've killed some of the enemies down there, I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and head up here so that the surveyors will end up flying into the wall, because right now they're causing me a lot of trouble with there being two super badass repair surveyors about. Luckily one of them decides to commit suicide right away, and at this point I know that I've pretty much won the run, because one of them's not quite as hard to avoid as two of them, especially if it's going to kill itself pretty quickly. Unfortunately, this badass marauder did ascend up the hill very quickly, but I have pretty much infinite ammo at this point because of the ammo uh, vending machine that's right behind me, and so I just used the Lyuta to go ahead and put 12 rounds in him and kill him pretty quickly. Obviously, now we just have the Digistruct binary boss left, and we'll go ahead and take him out pretty easily with the Pimpernel. A strategy against this guy that I'd recommend employing is just going ahead and slagging him once, switching to the corrosive Pimpernel, and blowing up his top half. This will usually take out about half a half or more of his health, ordinarily, is what I've noticed. Um, unfortunately, I killed him very quickly, or killed his top half very quickly, with the slag Pimpernel, and so it only took out about a third of his health. Now, I don't recommend taking this guy on head on because there's really no need to. His top half will respawn very quickly, and you won't have to worry about actually dealing damage to him. As you can see, his top half is already reconstructing, and so we're going to go ahead and get slag on the bottom half, and then shoot the dividing line again with the corrosive pimpernel, and that will go ahead and kill him off. So there's the whole Digistruct Peak run, guys. I hope the commentary was able to give you a few hints and tricks to go ahead and make it through this area. Obviously, the bonehead uh, step is the most critical. And I hope this video was very informative for you guys. I do appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't yet, please take the time to subscribe. I'd appreciate that as well. And we're back where we started the video, showing the gear and skill build. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.